Welcome, one and all, to episode zero of the official Bakugan Wiki podcast. I am your host, Darkest Master, or Venomous Brass, whichever you'd like to call me. I also go by DM for short, and I'm joined by three other hosts with me today. Up first, we have Hato, also known as Lamar Devante. Hey, my name's Lamar Devante. I'm the one with the subscriber count out of everybody here. And uh, I guess uh, I'll just introduce the next person, who is See What I. Hi guys, I'm the One Leak Wonder. I, I found the Bakugan dev site uh, th- at the beginning of this month, and uh, I'm probably the newest person in the community here. Oh boy. And uh, the other person with us is Rigatoni Jones. Hi, I don't even have an account on the wiki. <laughs> yeah, he's he's just kind of here. He's I am pretty much. He he's here when we do our uh, nineteen hundred part uh, frame by frame of Mctanium Surge and why it sucks. So, um, you know, yeah, Look I'm the one with the that. strong opinions. Look forward to that in a future episode. But anyway, just to get this all started, uh, what is this podcast even about? Why does it exist? Well, uh, we figured with Bakugan Battle Planet coming up very, very soon and information coming at us very fast, we'd like to have a good – well, we'd like this to be a bit of a good way to reach out to the community a little bit, provide a little bit of information, recap about the series, information we know, information we find out, information that may – or may not be true just in general to recap the show and all sorts of things like that this will mostly be a weekly kind of thing hopefully and with the majority focusing on battle planet as it comes that's basically it we're gonna have a few other segments mixed in in between but it's pretty much that anyway bakugan battle planet let's talk about a few things that we already know hato Go ahead and start. All right. So we are going to get into the brief history of Battle Planet, which has gone from 2015 to 2018. And do you mind if I just completely kick off the history of it, Darkest Master? I don't care. All right. So I'll get into it. So on August 31st, 2015, the reboot was confirmed by a Spin Master employee. And that is all we had at the time. And we didn't get any information um, during 2016. But during 2017, that's when the trademark for Bakugan Battle Planet was first found. I actually found that. Then the logo was found. And that was all for 2017. Nothing much outside of that. Now, then, keep in mi- now keep in mind that this logo we found was black and white only. Yeah, it was just from the trademark site. Um, and that's all we had. We didn't even get a colored one until later this year. But I'll just start with what happened first in 2018. So we ended up having a few conference calls going on, which gave us some information. Probably the biggest breakthrough out of all of this was an official PDF on the Spin Master website, which showed the potential cast for Battle Planet, which was the first official image we actually had regarding this reboot. Now... Uh, months after this, there was a huge gap in information, but as mentioned before, see what I ended up finding the developer site, which cited the December 1st date for something, which we don't know. It was just a countdown and it's still just a countdown. We don't have confirmation for, but that gave us a colored logo in HD, which was pretty nice. Soon after this, we got the banner from, uh, the branding licensing expo, which was held in Europe, where Cartoon Network was, which showed off maybe something about Battle Planet. We don't know much about it, to be completely honest. Um, We know about a potential air date because of an official press release. It's coming out sometime in December in North America. In Canada, it's airing on Teletoon, and in the United States, it's airing on Cartoon Network. A missed opportunity, if I don't say so myself. Yeah, but... um. I think now may be the best time for us to get into the actual topic of Battle Planet itself. Right. So in addition to all of the things we've talked about already, let's just go over some 
other things that we know are going to happen from some other releases we've found. Uh, as far as we know, uh, it looks like the show uh, is going to start in December. So that's when the show is happening. It is going to be in what looks to be uh, 100 episodes in 11 minutes. So that's 11 minute episodes and there are a hundred of them. Make of that what you will. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But in addition to that, the toys are currently, I believe, planned to come out in quarter one of next year in North America and other select markets. It did not specify which ones. It just said other select markets. And then Bakugan Battle Planet toys are aiming for a full world worldwide release in Q2 2019. That is basically all we know unless anyone has anything else to add uh no i think that is it for all the information we have regarding battle planet so far so um i guess the first thing we'll look at is what we want out of the toys which we don't even know much about quite honestly but rigatoni do you want to maybe start us off on what you want from the toys uh i'd be happy to so i think uh, something interesting about the toys is that they keep on mentioning an innovative new feature, like a new fresh breath of life into the toy line. And I have a feeling that this isn't just like talk. I feel as if there is a feature here and what that feature is. I don't know what I'm personally hoping for is maybe like Baku snaps or something similar to what they had for the convert system for uh, Baku Tech, or maybe even something like Bakugan Armors. That would be nice. And I really hope that they don't have an extreme power creep in the series like they had in North America and European regions, because that was crazy. Also, a game that's not completely broken and imbalanced would be nice, too. Yeah, the uh, making a balanced game would probably be the most important thing at this point, because let, let's be honest, the original uh, Bakugan game, as we knew it, was very, very broken when you look deep into it. Not even deep into it, like on a surface level, it was broken. Like, we've had, we've had a few people over on a Discord server we've got where... Uh, we pretty much found out that it actually benefits you better to run weaker Bakugan than stronger ones. As weird as that sounds. Yeah. So It's the like the complete opposite of every other trading game ever. Yeah, right. it's really weird. Because the power creep, instead of like uh, the things that get the power creep become more powerful, the power creep actually becomes the older releases getting more powerful and powerful after every release because of the higher G powers and nothing to stop the old cards that say something along the lines of old or lowest G power wins or uh, if a certain difference in G power happens, then you get in a crazy bonus or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, Anything. I just, yeah, I mean, just to add, like, you know, Fundamentally, uh, I think from the game, uh, individual playing styles for each attribute needs to be a thing. Just because once you start, if, if once there is that, you know, you don't really want that power creep. So uh, keeping everything around the same level, but also having individual styles for each attribute would kind of help with that because there wouldn't have to be this huge range of G powers that you have instead of just having, you know, a math game, you can have basically these other styles of gameplay depending on the attribute is basically, you know, something that the original game didn't have because it really didn't matter what you were playing um, except for, you know, the specific cards that would, you know, benefit for lower G powers and stuff like that. 
So just mm-hmm. more individual play styles for each attribute would really be appreciated. And also, if we're talking about the toy line, please release booster packs and single attributes. Please, Spin Master. Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. Or even release booster packs of cards. Yeah, um, I, want, I want to mention what, see what I said. I think I said that before in some other conversation or maybe some video I did. But it's really important that Spin Master actually focuses on them having unique playstyles for each attribute. Because what's the incentive of using a Ventus Bakugan over a Pyrus Bakugan if I can run the same cards? It doesn't make any sense to me. And it doesn't make the game very unique either. It's just, hey, my G power is bigger than your G power. Or, hey, my card somehow turns the tables really quick, like Tricky, uh, I think it's like Tricky Gate, which makes lowest win. But yeah, it's something which Bakugan Dimensions did well because they had unique playing styles for each attribute of Bakugan, despite it not being very (laughs) Bakugan-like. So let's hope they end up doing something more similar to Dimensions, which is weird to say, but they need to make it more unique. Yeah. And actually, uh, something I'd like to um, add on with the whole like game kind of aspect, there's something we actually forgot to mention a bit back in what we know. Uh, they mentioned very briefly in a press release that Bakugan Battle Planet, uh, the physical game, seems like it's going to have different... Uh, strategies or playing techniques i'm not sure exactly how you'd call it uh for like beginner advanced like tiered stuff i'd be really interested to see how that works oh yeah yeah you were right and also just to uh say something because this is something that has been left out of a few of the um press releases because people just uh, pick and choose information for their articles they did say something about wanting to make it uh, more compatible with multiple people battling at the same time because before, it was one-on-one. So even if you have four people going 1v1v1v1, you would still be doing 1v1s in the battle. So having multiple people face off at the same time in the battle would be pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah really. Yeah. That, that'd be a little... Uh, I think it'd be a little weird to uh, uh, figure out who exactly wins in a battle like that, though. I think they'd probably have to set up a sort of... a like tiered system you know how um how fire emblem does their things like certain weapon types work better against others and then even like in the most basic aspect rock paper scissors like like rock beats uh scissors and stuff like that and so on so forth like if there's there'd have to be that sort of mechanic with the attributes well yeah even then it's like what happens with two of the same attribute yeah, I mean, that already kind of existed in the Bakugan video game where different arenas uh, benefited different attributes and some negated. I mean, this was obviously in a timing battle game, but even so, certain attributes affect others negatively or positively depending on, you know, the arena or whatever in the video game. So, I mean, they kind of already have that kind of laid out in the old rules somewhere out there if they pay that much attention. So, I mean, it probably wouldn't be too much to actually work that out in an actual system. Mm. Yeah. Right, right. Also, Um, for the love of our Lord and Savior, the infinitely evolving Dragonoid, please, please have, like, standard trading card sized ability cards. It... Would, is that too much to ask for, for me to be able to sleeve my cards? I mean, Absolutely. Did it, Japan, did it, pulled off? Japan did it right. America never got to it. I mean, Japan, it took them, I think, a little bit to get to that standard card size. But the West never got to that. Well, the thing is that Japan, they actually pulled it off during New Vistroya. I don't think they did that during Season 1, but during New Vistroya, that's when they started doing the cards like that. And I believe, um, I'm not sure about Season 3, but I believe they did it as well. Uh, and I'm not sure about Bakutech. But one thing I wanted to bring Bakutech up... Is, Bakutech had the uh, smaller cards as well. Okay. But one thing I wanted to bring up is that if they do uh, keep the regular size, start releasing the proprietary card sleeves in, in bulk for a cheap price because why do I want to buy 10 card sleeves for like $5 
because I'd rather start putting tape around my cards or laminating these suckers if I'm going to play with them because I'm not paying that much for proprietary sleeves. Now we're better, only better yet, include them in the booster packs. For real. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that would be really cool. Like a unique card sleeve every uh, booster pack. Because it I mean, really I mean the whole idea of... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. This isn't like Yu-Gi-Oh! where different card sleeves can be considered cheating. That completely yeah. doesn't matter. Never mind. <laughs> Ignore me. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be cool. Also, yeah. organized play. Organized play. Yes. Fun. Yeah. Uh, and um, then if I could add another thing, because we probably have to move on to the next point at some point here. Uh, something I just like about the toys in general. Uh, make the designs really, like, unique. Like, I'm holding a Borg Mises from Bakutech right now, and I've been fiddling around with it for like the past 10 minutes and and the design on this is just fantastic bakutech are absolutely stellar in this they're Marvels. super super high quality they're really good and interesting designs do that for like everybody not just japan please well i want to kind of branch off of that point i do want them to have something um specific like that because um during gachi where they were able to change the modes in that that was really cool that was innovative beyond belief but one thing that i like that bakugan did is that they started off small with simple designs and then they branched off later on and while it wasn't the best during mectanium surge because of all the bumps and the whips on them they did it right during bakutech so if they can go from the b1s to bakutech and within the four year span they're golden and that's what i think they should really do start off simple and then get really innovative oh that that'd be an interesting way to keep people suckered in yeah all the collecting because after all it's all about the collecting all right um since we've been on this about toys and the card game and all that i think we should get on to the next point which is the tv show and could i give my point first about that sure thing yes all right so something really important is the subplots um Season one was really good for subplots because they had the relationships going on. So there is um, Julie and Billy, Reno and Dan, Chun Li and Joe, which should have been expanded on New Destroyer, really. Uh, some other subplots, Masquerade being Alice, which was amazing. That was one of the best things they had done. The running joke about Marucho's bathroom being the guest room. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't was- remember that at all. Oh, it's the ultimate uh, actual plot line in all of Bakugan. It's the underlying plot. It is. But I, I'm hoping that Battle Plane does something like that because I thought it was really sweet what they were doing when they had um, Dan and Reno's date at the end of season one, as well as showing what was going on between Chun Li and Joe. And I wish they had expanded on these points, but obviously they didn't. But if they can do something like that in Battle Planet, I will be super impressed because I think those were some of the best elements they had. Oh, indeed. And going off of that, just in general, have a good plot or a plot at all. Uh, When I found out that the episodes were going to be 11 minutes long instead of 22, I got very, very, very worried. Especially with how cartoons seem to be going nowadays how they're less about like adventure and plot and more on like stupid silly funny stuff and all sorts of comedy and all that all that jazz that's never what bakugan's been about there's been some comedic relief in there it's pretty much all of marucho's guardians it's pretty much their staple at this point marucho's guardians and baron uh (laughs) yeah true uh god okay But if I, really, though, a plot, just figure out some way in the 11 minute episodes to do a plot, please. Well, I think they may be able to pull that off. Um, just going to reference Bakutak. While that was more focused on the game itself, if they're able to do something where they can actually get through something important within maybe the two parts, then that's fine by me. Um, but let's see how that goes because obviously it's a completely different dynamic. We're not focusing on the card game. We're focusing on the actual beasts themselves fighting. Right. Yeah, Hado. I was going to bring up, I don't want them to be very true to the actual card game in the anime just because 
New Destroy is my se- favorite season of the show, and the battles in that season are amazing, and they did not follow the game hardly at all. And I think they don't should, shouldn't focus too much on the card game aspect so much in the first season. Maybe a little bit more in the first season just to, you know, really get people interested in the actual game itself. But don't focus too much on the card game because then, you know, you get the what the mess of battles season one was. And yeah. I kind of disagree with you because you're saying that it wasn't falling after the card game, which is true because everyone was just spamming ability cards and the only time they really ran out was like episode 7 where it's Shun versus Shadow Probe and he's like, I only have three ability cards left. Well, all right then. But I think that they kind of did follow the game because obviously they were taking turns with their ability cards and it was one gate card at a time and not you could put two down. I still think that it's important that they follow it to a certain extent at first because if we look at season one, um, you see that they're just constantly setting down cards because that was the original rules. They were using hollow sector points, HSP, and hopefully they actually get the game set in stone within the first run. And yeah, even if it right. is New Vestoria esque, I still think that following the rules to a certain extent is important. Let's just look at Chaotic. They actually introduced abilities and strategies in the game which were completely viable. So Like that's also that's also part of a point of uh merchandise centered shows like this anyway, is to sort of serve as a bit of a stepping stone into the game itself. Look at Yu-Gi-Oh! When it started it was very like cut and dry cards now granted like the rules in duelist kingdom were nothing like we have now you could summon any monster once per turn and you only had 2000 life points which you have 8000 now and it's down to a uh, still one monster but in certain levels it started leading up to that at some point but it just serves as a bit of a gateway into the physical game itself. So as long as it has some semblance, I think it's fine. Yeah. Should it be exactly like it? No, because then the battles eventually will just get to, like, gate card, roll, battle, I'm out of abilities, oh well. Did you just say gate a gate card roll? It's possible. Yes. All laws of physics. Have you ever tried rolling a triangle? <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh. I, I want to get in my uh, thoughts in here because you all know that I have thoughts on shows. Of course. Oops. Yeah. Oh <laughs> now, don't worry. I'm not going to make it a long-winded diatribe on why Mectanium Surge should not exist and why season one is also bad. But that comes later. That comes much later. <laughs> but an important thing is... While, yes, they can have a plot, I don't think it's important for the plot to be as deep as possible as much as it is for the characters going through the plot to be good. There's many shows where the characters are great and I love them, and but the plot is very kind of... I, I simple, I would say, but the characters make it 100%. For examples, Common Rider Kuga, really any Digimon series, uh, Chaotic even. And Hado, thanks for bringing up that point about Chaotic, because Chaotic, it was basically the game. They just switched out the battles of the card game, which were just like taking turns playing cards to actual battles in between the creatures and that was a great way to show the game without boring audiences. Yeah, it was uh, executed really well. I think I remember something about each tribe or each group kind of just taking over, but they were still able to bring in the elements of the proper game itself, which is great. Like, they need to maybe try something like that in Season 1 or even Season 2, because we know Season 2 is in production, which is, you know, they're really trying. But I really do hope they kind of follow something like Chaotic, because that did it right, and... I think that was a really good show. Sadly, it was uh, ended. But hey, Bakugan, please come in and make us happy with this chaotic-esque anime. 
I yeah. Think. I think another point is, uh, since we're talking about the anime, uh, people... Uh, speaking to people who are, especially people who are skeptical uh, skeptical about the anime is we should probably give Spin Master a little bit of a chance and room to actually experiment with it because I, well, I just hope Spin Master isn't afraid to experiment a little bit you know, find a, a place back in the, the area because you know they've mostly been doing children's shows like Paw Patrol and so I think you know season one even if it's not great still not to you know lose all hope on Spin Master and just hopefully just you know be a vocal community and hopefully Spin Master will listen and bring make a good show that everyone will enjoy not just the new fans that they want to attract well you know what i have to refute your point because there is no reason to bash paw patrol i mean it really falls after its original plot line the anime is amazing i love it the characters are very well developed through the seasons i love the live action movie of paw patrol as well one of my favorites yep yep as someone who has seen many seasons of paw patrol i do have to say uh that plot twist of the Mykerion coming to Earth, that was absolutely stunning. Spoilers! <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, bleep that out, bleep that out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so there's, I think there's a lot to be desired by the anime, quite honestly. I think a lot of it has come for me, but come on, we gotta pull something off like Chaotic, maybe a bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! Obviously Yu-Gi-Oh! is a basis for, for a lot of these shows, maybe, because of how long it's been around. I'm not even going to mention Pokemon, because Pokemon's just not relevant to this at all. Yeah, it's really, for as prolific as it is, Pokemon doesn't really apply to the whole uh, card game multimedia franchise part of it as much as it just applies to a multimedia franchise based on video games of just don't force your game mechanics into it. Allude to them, but don't like force them in right we have talked about the show quite a bit and i'm pretty sure we only have one last topic left which shouldn't really take long and, and it's, it's all and it's about- also something we haven't mentioned yet either it, boy we're good at true. this now what is this we're gonna be talking about the bakugan app so you guys are good to go because i've been talking so much so any of you take it so right. um the, uh, i'll take this one so they mentioned in their original press release that they wanted to include some form of app play um they that's basically all we have and they wanted to um i believe if i remember correctly it was include um gameplay that works with both in real life and in at play so whatever that means um and uh i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna give it to um rigatoni to talk about what he wants from the app oh goodness gracious that's a that's an error but go on (laughs) yeah you've made a horrible mistake uh that's what i was hoping for but go ahead (laughs) yeah so i think it would be really cool to you know how the old Bakugan video game that we all know and love, Bakugan Battle Trainer, uh, you know the one released for the, uh, it, not the actually the Battle Trainer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not actually like the classic video game where you basically just play the game tabletop simulated, like with the, getting boosts around the arena and stuff would be really cool because it would kind of connect the card game and supply a place where you could play the card game with people you don't live next to because Bakugan, due to the way it works with its physics-based gameplay, has to be played together in one place. So a digital format would be really nice. So yeah, that's basically just all of my hopes, is just to be able to, you know, kind of how Pokemon TCG, how they include a 
co- code card in the package that gives you a digital version of all your cards to play online with. That's basically just what I want. I don't want like DNA codes for individual Bakugan. I just want the pack that I buy to come with a card that has a code. I punch in in an app. It gives me the cards and the Bakugan and has the same physics play of the original, you know, console and DS game where you're rolling around. That would pretty much fix the not being able to roll in real life thing and another thing um to kind of go away from it if it's not like that i feel like they might have some form of like how pokemon go has you know your uh i i forget what they actually call it the companion pokemon where you know you put it in your companion slot, and as you walk around and stuff, you gain experience. So just kind of something like that, kind of having a guardian Bakugan that you can select and just kind of maybe boost. In the original uh, video game, you had like rolling stats and magnet stats and stuff like that. So maybe a way to boost those by, you know, having some borrowing some ideas from Pokemon Go, not having an actual Go game, but like, you know, just kind of that trainer, you know, just some form of aspect of that. Okay. That'd that'd be Um, kind of interesting, actually. I I wanted to bring something up. Um, If you guys are familiar with how modern cars are, where they have the rear view cameras, now this is going to sound completely out of left field, but cars, they have rear view cameras and they can detect what is in that area. What I'm kind of hoping for Bakugan is that maybe you'll be able to position your phone, iPad, if you have some webcam, and it's able to have a sensor to pick up um, where you place your card. So when you roll your Bakugan on the opponent's screen, it will pop up. Um, It's kind of more like what we do now when we Hmm. play. So on Bakugan meta, we play using webcams. And instead of just saying, oh, hey, my Bakugan landed here, maybe the screen would be able to detect where a Bakugan lands. You maybe input your cards beforehand. Because um, one thing that could happen is that there is the unique codes on the cards or you're forced to show your opponent the card. Again, it's just an idea. But I think that something like that would be pretty cool because... um, if we're doing Bakugan, it's hard to play online. If we look at the Beyblade Burst app, for example, you can't. It, it, there is no pattern to your Beyblade or anything. So if you try shooting your Bakugan a certain way, because some people, they just flick it. Some people use two fingers to roll. They use the push-down method where you some, use your thumb to kind of just push it. Um, it's Some, some people Bakugan. spin it, like I do. Some people yeah. blatantly throw it at the wall and then it hits the gate card somehow. I don't know, man. You ask your dog to bring it to the card for you. I don't know. <laughs> however it rolls, I don't care. So basically, your dog yeah. is the main villain. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you're saying dog is you want, you want an AR game, basically, to be able to kind of like the... I guess it's the new Lego app where you can actually build Lego and then scan it into the app and it will actually appear on a tabletop if you hold it over yeah yeah kind of like that i think it can work you know if they do something because um also sorry about saying a lot of things but this is just on the mind on my mind if you guys are familiar with stick bots they have the packs which are like the setups which comes with a small green screen a really uh low quality tripod in that if they did that for Bakugan, where they gave you the tripod and that, then maybe a small arena and one Bakugan, they're like, you set your phone up, then you put it there, it detects where the cards is, shows it on your screen, opponent's screen, and it's like a Bakugan-specific Skype call sort of thing going on, or Discord call, because that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> um, I think that would be amazing, but again, that's a long shot away. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So, sure just that. a... Sorry, just a question for everyone here who here wants dimensions to come back in any capacity i think we uh, all do. i think everyone uh, yeah. kind of does but obviously in different ways i mean i only played dimensions once and i couldn't figure out the battle mechanics <laughs> i mean I, was, uh, I, I, I wasn't good at the battles to be honest yeah, i wasn't so going with whatever i worked. never played it so I mean, yeah, I, was, I also. I was eleven at the time, so you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure oh, it was all, that like, long ago. Jeez. Yeah. Oh. So it's like, you know, 
I mean, I don't really have any really fond memories of Dimensions. I just remember waiting for it for a really long time. And then we canceled our internet and didn't have internet for like a year right before Dimensions came out. And I never really got to play it. So mm-hmm. that's how I feel about Dimensions. I, that- it would be cool to have an online game, but I feel like they're going to focus more on an app than on the website to have an actual game. Yeah. Mind if I drag a little bit of a parallel from that to today? Well, so when you think about it, Dimensions, uh, it came out and it was only around for a little over a year, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then and then it was shut down. Uh, some of you guys may be familiar with Club Penguin. Oh, the, yes. Yes. The very famous website yeah. game sort of thing. Uh, when it announced it was going to shut down at some point, uh, they started advertising this app called Club Penguin Island. Oh, goodness. And then uh, that's where everything started to be. It started as an app, but then it went to a, a more desktop version through a website, just like the original Club Penguin was. Right. And then bombed. And now it has been revealed as of, I think, God, how long has it been? Maybe a month? Yeah, it's been a month. It's been a month. That uh, Club Penguin Island is going to be shut down by the end of the year. So that didn't even last a year. Well, I mean, there's something specific about that. It's because, first off, um, if we're talking about what happened with Dimensions and now, it's been a six or seven year gap. But also, Club Penguin actually had a large following. Compared to Bakugan, you know, it was just ten times more popular. (laughs) But the fact is that people were used to playing on desktop and that the mobile version completely switched it. A few things is that it was mostly mini games. Uh, I think it was more moderated communication, which is an issue if you're trying to talk online. And also you really need to pay to actually play the game despite it being a free app and originally being a free website, which then required membership like like No Tomorrow. So that's something about Bakugan. I think they're going to pull something like the Beyblade Burst app where you brawl online, think of the video game on your phone, right? Battle Trainer. And maybe using a QR code or a DNA code of some sorts to get your Bakugan in the game, you have the locker, you probably can't talk to people, security and safety reasons, of course. But, um, yeah, of course. They're they're aiming for kids, and besides, what do I want to see? Some kid looking like he's just bashing his head into the phone keyboard? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, is yeah, that all that's our thoughts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I think. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say I think we covered everything, but see what I you seem kind of talkative now, don't you? I just don't worry. I mean, I don't think DM didn't say too much about the app. That's that's because I honestly don't know what to expect and don't know what to hope for. Understand. Well, I'll, I'll I'll be completely honest. I think probably the most likely option it's going to be is some sort of AR kind of thing. Uh, it might be a little similar to Pokemon Go in that aspect, but obviously it has to have more on the battling aspect, that sort yeah. of thing. Right. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I'm honestly not sure what to expect because I don't know how Bakugan would even go through with something like that. All right. And I, th- I think with that, since we've covered pretty much everything we're going to take care of uh, this time, everything we planned on doing on 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 this episode blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think we're going to end this here thanks so much for dealing with us during this little uh, what would you call this a little bit of a trial of a trial podcast run. sort of format uh, we'll get well, obviously we'll get more comfortable with this as we go along I think even definitely throughout the course of this episode it's gotten a lot uh, more authentic I would like to say <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've been. I, I think we've all been pretty tense. This is our first time recording the podcast episode zero coming at you, clutch. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Future episodes will be better than this, and we hope to start regular episodes shortly. Uh, we don't know when the first trailer is going to come out, but there will probably be an episode sometime after that. So look forward to that. And with that, we are going to end this first, technically zeroth, if that's even a word, episode of the Bakugan Wiki Podcast. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. I've been Darkest Master. 
I've been Hato and I think everyone else has been their screen name for the time being, but hey, just do the outros, my boys. I, I've been see what I <laughs> And I've been a very sad man. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>